And I'm going to open up the conversation by using an old Oxford University medicine interview question around this subject. But I want you to imagine that you're a doctor and that you have a kidney ready to be transplanted and three patients in need of a kidney. One of the patients is a two-year-old child, but the child has a genetic disorder, meaning they're unlikely to live past 20. Another potential beneficiary is a 40-year-old man who is an alcoholic and he smokes 10 cigarettes per day. And the last potential recipient is a 75-year-old woman who, as far as we can tell, lives a virtuous life. So not a terribly nice thing to talk about or to think about, but obviously important because scenarios not dissimilar to this can absolutely crop up. I suppose it goes to what is the purpose of a kidney transplant in the first place. Is it to provide the greatest extension to mm. life possible? Sort of, in that sense, would you then consider those who are sort of either have a genetic condition where they are likely to die younger or mm. somebody who's 75, would you maybe sort of consider those differently to the 40-year-old man and think, well, he's got the longest life expectancy right. ahead of him? So, but then is that the point of a transplant is to just create the most amount of life possible or is it to go to the patient with the greatest medical need for it? And I suppose you would... I mean, it's interesting. When you, when you start calculating, say, years of mm -hmm. life, then we're getting into the world of what we could call consequentialist ethics, which is where we look at the likely consequences and we can even quantify those consequences in a way that everyone could potentially agree. Um, uh, which kind of encompasses what that Hippocratic Oath says, which the main part of it is just that doctors should do no harm, Absolutely. basically. Do no harm and do no injustice, which yeah. are two of the four pillars of medical ethics. So I, I teased earlier that there are sent, said to be four pillars of medical mm -hmm. ethics. Of course, we could, we could describe several more if we wanted to, but these are uh, usually the classics, and they, they're largely derivative of Hippocrates and Aristotle and some other Greeks and more modern thinkers, of course. But those are uh, autonomy, um, beneficence, meaning do good as far as you can, non-maleficence, do no harm, exactly as you said earlier, Becky, and justice. So do any of those help us out with this conundrum around the kidney? Now, I wonder if you agree with me that a gut instinct for many people would be to give the kidney to the child not necessarily for the sake of the child, but actually because that accords with our sense of trying to protect children in medical contexts above adults, potentially, that, that we, it could be just part of our nature that we just feel that children ought to be protected from harm. 